Welcome to part two of my series on privatizing your Windows 7 PC. In part one, we cover the obvious exposed interfaces that you should disable. In this video, we'll be kicking it up a notch and digging below the surface and giving Microsoft the ultimate boot. So in my research preparing for this video, um, I found quite a few different ways to crack the egg, but this particular super user Q&A page seemed to summarize it pretty well. Um, I'll be using this as kind of a guide here and I'll put a link to it in the description below. So again, this first part about disabling the customer experience improvement program, I covered all this in uh, part one. For this video, we'll be focusing on this stop Windows telemetry tracking upgrading to Windows 10 for Windows 7 and 8.1. Be aware that at this point, if you haven't upgraded to Windows 10, I recommend you don't. But if you do want to, you gotta pay for it. And believe me, if you pay for it, this in no way will affect your ability to upgrade. Okay, so this first step involves running the WUSA command for uninstalling Windows packages. Go to start search, type C-O-M, right click command prompt, and run as administrator. So one way to do it would be to just copy and paste each WUSA command one by one. And if you don't know, after you copy, right click the top of the command prompt and click edit paste. So because of the quiet switch, you won't get much feedback. You can take that out if you want more feedback. Now a faster way would be to right click the desktop, click new text document. Give it a name ending in .cmd like no spy.cmd. Right click your new file, click edit, and you want to just uh, select the remainder of the WUSA commands and copy and paste them in there. And save the file and right click it and run as administrator. So what this will do, this will run all those WUSA commands in a new command prompt window. I sped this up, but uh, it'll take a few minutes to run. Okay, so now step two. Okay, so in the same administrator command prompt, um, we got the following services to be removed. Uh, just cut and paste just like before. So if you get this um, service does not exist message, that's a good thing, nothing to do there.
Okay, so now for step three, we got some uh, task scheduler work. If you saw my part one in this video series, you'll know that uh, some of these things were already covered in part one. We'll go through them nevertheless. Click on start, type task in the search. Click on task scheduler. Okay, so open up the tree to Task Scheduler Library, Microsoft, Windows, and Application Experience. So you wanna make sure status here is set to disable for everything. If not, just right click it and select disable. Next up, go to the auto CHK folder. So here you can see I have one that's not disabled, I want to disable that. If you're curious, just click on actions and you can see what's getting executed when this task runs. So here again, right click, disable. Next up, click on customer experience improvement. Make sure everything here is disabled. Next click on disk diagnostic. Okay, in this area, you wanna make sure the Windows Disk Diagnostic Data Collector is disabled. The Windows Disk Diagnostic Resolver, make sure that's left at ready. Okay, under maintenance, you wanna make sure WinSAT is disabled. Okay, now under the Media Center folder, Make sure all these are set to disable. Note that you can see a lot of these have never run um, under the last runtime column, but uh, nevertheless, they could run, so set them to disable. Okay, so now for this last step, step four, they're asking us to block all these Microsoft servers, domains, and IPs in a router. Um, that's really the best way to do it because you can block it for all computers at one time. I don't have that option since I have AT&T Uverse uh, without adding another third-party router. So for anybody in my situation, I'm gonna show how to do this on a per computer basis. Start by launching Windows Explorer. Navigate to Windows System 32 Drivers Etsy. Now in this folder there should be a file called Hosts. H-O-S-T-S. -S. I actually don't have one so uh, if you're in my situation you can recreate it by going to this Microsoft link. I'll provide the link in the description and get the template. Okay, just copy the template from this web page. Back in Windows Explorer, just right click the background area and create new text document and call it hosts.txt and paste in your template. Now just right click the file, select rename and make the new name hosts with no file extension at all. Right click the host file, click open, and then select your favorite text editor. Notepad's always an option. Okay, now back at the super user webpage, just select all the IPs and domain names from this little text window and copy and paste them into the host file. And while you're at it, uncomment these uh, two lines for the local host. One is the IPv4 and one is IPv6. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put 0.0.0.0 in front of each entry. And what this does is uh, makes each entry invalid. It technically routes right back to your own computer um, and it'll make it unroutable. 
So you can make these entries by hand or you can copy and paste you know, line by line. But um, I use this editor called Vim for those of you who might not know. Vim is an awesome editor um, originally from VI in the Unix world and it lets you do things like uh, visual block insert. Um, so I'll do all lines with one single insert like so. So while this host file mapping trick works great for domain names, it does not work at all for IP addresses, so we need to remove these. Um, but not to fear, I have another trick to take care of these. So before we move on to my next trick, um, let's do a quick test here to show how this works. We'll copy one of the domain names and run a ping request against it and um, see what happens. Okay, so if the host file is set up the way we want it, you should get this ping request, uh, could not find host. And just to confirm it's our handiwork, we'll add a comment, comment this one out, save, run the ping request again. And this time, uh, you'll see the ping is successful. Okay, so now if you open up your command prompt again and type uh, T-R-A-C-E-R-T, -E we're going to run a trace route on the first IP address here. And so what this trace route shows us is uh, this computer has no problem at all reaching that IP address um, should it be so told to do so. Okay, to fix this problem we need first to make sure we know what our default gateway is set to. So if you type IP config ipconfig and here we can see it's 192.168.1.1 so what we're going to do is we're going to add something called a null route and basically that'll redirect the traffic right back to this computer uh, first of all take a look at your routing table by typing route print dash four for the ipv4 routing table might not be a bad idea to do a print screen to save this uh, so you know what it looks like if you need to get back to it uh, so here's the command uh, we're going to use, which is route space add space uh, the IP address and then space mask for the net mask 255, 255, 255, 255, and then the default gateway, which was 192.168.1.1 for me. And then if space one space dash P, which makes it permanent. Now if we run the route print command again, we'll see our new route in the persistent routes area. For those of you who don't know, just hit the up arrow to go back to previous commands. Now if we go back to the uh, trace route command on the same IP, we'll see this general failure, which is great, which is what we want. So what this means is this computer now cannot reach this IP address any longer. Of course, we can always delete routes with the route delete command if we wanted. For now, we'll proceed with adding routes for the rest of the IP addresses. So at the end of it all, you should have persistent routes look like this. So now about Windows updates, if you go to start, type T-U-R-N, turn, and then select turn automatic updating on or off. So there's four options here. You want to be on one of the bottom two options. So 
uh, never check for updates or check for updates but let me choose when to download and install them and this keeps you in control and I would check the check boxes like so so now about the Windows updates if you go to the Windows updater um, icon open it up um, Microsoft's going to try to reinstall these packages that we removed and so you have to actually look for the um, packages to show up um, and use the KB number to identify them and then when you find one show up in your updater you can right click it and select hide and that's how um, you can prevent them from doing it again so here I'm looking at the so-called important update area and I'm gonna search each KB update proposal that they have listed against the um, the master list from the super user web page that we were using I put it in a text document I'm just gonna go one by one searching for a match once I find a match um, I'll set it to hide and um, move, move it out of the list here So after going down the list here, I found a match with this KB971033 update. I right click it and select hide update. So once you've hit an update, you want to remove it from your list. Um, I've got my own little system here, whatever system works for you, just so you can keep track of which ones have been hidden so you don't have to look uh, through such a big haystack every time. So each time you find one, move it out of the list, your list will get smaller and smaller. So that's pretty much it. You do that for the next few updates, just keep an eye on them. Um, if ever in doubt, you can rerun the nospy.cmd script that we wrote earlier just leave that available um, then after a few updates you should be pretty well cleared out and not have to mess with it anymore ah uh, the language pack updates just ignore that that's not relevant to what we're doing here so when you're done scrubbing the proposed updates you can go ahead and install like normal Save your scrub file for later use uh, next time you do your updates. Just keep scrubbing them. And that's how it's done.